good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are glad you are joining us here today on Sunday, May the 10th, mm -hmm. also known as Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all um, mothers, but also um, Mother's Day is a celebration of all women who make a life, uh, make a difference in mm -hmm. the lives of children. Yes. Um, so happy Mother's Day to our spiritual mothers as well. Um, we are grateful for what you do in the lives of others. So, yep. um, yeah, I am Pastor Serena. I serve Townline Lutheran Church in Alden. And I'm Vicar Rick. I serve St. Peter Lutheran Church in Medina, New York. And Happy Mother's Day. Aww. Yes. That's the first time I've actually get to hear Happy Mother's Day from you on a Mother's Day. Because normally I'm at church. Yeah, we're usually like at way, church. Right. Yeah, I'm usually at church uh -huh. like at 7.15 in the morning. And yeah. you're um, getting ready for day. I've left mm -hmm. while you're getting ready to go to your church because they start much later than yes. town line does. Yes, so, so happy Mother's Day. And, and also to those that find Mother's Day a challenge, whether you have a strained relationship with your mother, you've lost your mother, or you've lost a child or, or something like that. We know that this holiday is also... It could be a challenge for people, and we know that we see you, and you're being held up in prayer today as well. So, welcome to worship. Um, we'll do our normal Sunday morning thing. Um, we'll have a prayer. We'll have readings. We'll have a sermon. We'll have some music at the end, which is this week is provided by Kate Snyder from Town Line. And you also get to see episode two of our field trip of faith this week as well. So we're very excited to bring that to you today as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. Wonderful. So we're going to light our candle here to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And then after that, we'll begin with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Mm -hmm. We'll begin with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let's give thanks for the gift of baptism. And you can, if you're doing the water at home, you can make a sign of the cross on your forehead. If you're there with your family, um, you can make a sign of the cross on their foreheads for them as well. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for water in this font, and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, hi. Hey. We're glad you're here. Welcome to Field Trip Faith. And this week, um, last week, you know, we started working on um, a field trip to tie in with our theme and our gospel reading for today. Mm -hmm. um, and so Rick has been working hard on looking at the gospel. So Rick, what have you what have you found in our gospel reading? Well, Serena, I have been working hard at this. And so we're in the book of John this week on the 14th chapter. And, and, a pass, and a passage in this text really jumped out to me where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And so I got to thinking... Is there some place on our field trip that we can go that can point us in the right direction, that can show us the way? Hmm. And I was thinking like road signs or something like that. But I was like, no, there's got to be something a little more creative than that, perhaps. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I found it in the map. Right, what go. you got? Let's what see. Uh, da, da, da. Right there. Oh, right there. Perfect. That's it. Right Great. there. That'll All show right. us the way. All right. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Oh, wait. 
wait, wait. What? Take your hat. Okay. And then we gotta leave the cat. Right, okay, leave the cat. Sorry, you need to stay. Be a good boy. Okay. Take the hat, got it. My name is Pastor Serena. My name is Vicar Rick. Pastors. Parents. Where, Where are, are the kids? kids? And people who can find God in every situation. With a Master of Divinity degree. And a passion for getting out of the house. We are traveling the ends of Western New York to explore the gospel in some amazing locations. This, this is, is Field Trip, Trip Faith. Faith. Hi, and welcome. We took a field trip to Chestnut Ridge um, Park, and we are on the Eternal Flame Trail, which I bet if you're from our area, you've either heard of or you've been to, and we've been here as a family quite a few times, and um, we'll probably throw in a picture, a family picture we did a few years ago that was pretty cool, but um, it's pretty deserted because um, of social distancing, and it's a little cold today. A little chilly today. A little we're chilly all bundled today. up for we're winter on up, May so. 5th when May we're recording 5th. this, so it's really, really chilly. But the cool thing about this trail is that you'll notice the trail markers up here. They're, they're along the path, and it's got a flame on it for eternal flame, so it's really easy to follow your way along here. And as we were reading the gospel reading for this week, we discovered that Jesus was talking about being the way and the truth and the life. And what came to mind to me was trail markers. Mm -hmm. Trail markers are used to help us stay on the path so that we don't wander away into places where they might not be the safest place to be, especially here in the Eternal Flame Trail, because if you wander a little too far that way, you'll see the picture that we're gonna post. There's a cliff over there. And if you go <laughs> off that cliff, that could be bad news bears. So we don't want any of that to happen. And so I was thinking about Jesus talking about being the way Jesus is kind of our trail marker in life, pointing us on the way to life and to love and to hope and to care for our neighbors, which is exactly what I think our world needs right now. And that's exactly how I think that we all could be in this time of pandemic and compassionate distancing. So I encourage you to continue, as you always have been, I'm sure, <laughs> to continue to find where Jesus is pointing you in life, towards those places where there can be life and love and hope. And if you continue to do that, those trail markers that Jesus points out for us are going to lead to some pretty cool places. So glad you came along with us today. I hope it's warmer where you are. We're going to say a quick prayer before we go back to the rest of the service. So let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your awesome creation and for your son Jesus who points us along the way to keep us safe, to keep us grounded, and to keep us pointing towards ways that we can love one another. Amen. Our Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me 
will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to pray with me. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be centered on you this day and always. And all God's people said, Amen. So I start with a question to think about from our gospel reading, that very first verse. When you hear the words, do not let your hearts be troubled, but believe in God and also Jesus, what comes to mind? What comes to mind for you? Well, when I hear those words, I, I usually am very reassured. Mm. Yeah, I'm usually very reassured, like, okay, don't let your hearts be troubled. It's kind of a reminder for me that whatever's mm. troubling me to not be troubled. And so often we read um, the first six verses at funerals. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what comes every time I read this reading. That's why I know the first six verses by heart. Mm. <laughs> I didn't need this. I didn't need the reading for the first six verses. I have that memorized. But it, it just reminds me to not let our hearts be troubled when we lose someone we love mm -hmm. um, and when we have challenging times. But our reading continues with more than just yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Great. So how about you? Yeah. Um, what came to mind for me when I, when I heard this, I was, I was thinking of a conversation with God I've been having lately. I was thinking like, well, God, th this is all well and good in normal times, right? Or when we're at like a typical funeral, if there's ever such a thing. But to not let my heart be troubled right now, you got to be joking, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but my heart has been troubled. And I'm sure a lot of yours have been as well. With, with all of this coronavirus pandemic that has been going on in our lives, I, I don't know how our hearts cannot be troubled. I mean, we we'll talk about funerals and grieving. Well, I've been grieving without the funeral about our life together as a church when we used to come together on Sunday mornings to sing and to share the peace and to share in communion and I grieved the end of my seminary career which is imminent actually and, and it's certainly not ending as I was hoping now my grades are fine I will graduate but there's no graduation ceremony and there's no well wishes in person with classmates that will soon be colleagues with me in the church I grieve for my kids as well, and, and who had school canceled for the rest of the year here in New York State recently, and I'm sure in a lot of your states as well. And I grieve for my wife, who's going through these same things as well. And I grieve also for all of you and for our people in our churches, many of whom are vulnerable to the worst effects of this. And many who are grieving, I'm sure, in your own way too. I grieve for you who can't avoid right now being in vulnerable positions right now, whether it's due to work or other situations, which impacts you who are poor and really impacts you who are our siblings of color the most. And I'm sure that listening all of these things right now that trouble my heart has triggered in you all of the things that maybe you find troubling too. So, I know this is a little weird, but just take a moment to think about those things that you're grieving the most. Mm -hmm. and, and what's been the biggest loss for you? Yeah, yeah so I can, share, I can share mine. Um, my biggest loss is, and this is going to sound weird to those of you that aren't like me. I'm, Rick will testify to this. I'm a planner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but being a pastor that fits kind of well because we have to plan our vacations ahead of time. We have to plan out. We can't just all of a sudden wake up on a, a Friday morning and go, let's go away for the weekend because we work yeah. weekends. So so I'm a planner and I think the biggest loss for me is not being able to plan. Mm -hmm. I can make sort of plans, but the plans are dependent on and I, I don't know when we can look forward to planning the the next um, vacation which really I found really feeds my soul getting away and then coming back just makes me a better mm -hmm. pastor and better mom and better person so yeah. that's that's the biggest loss yeah. for me not being able to plan the things that I enjoy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, I know we might feel like we have no right to complain. I'm sure a lot of us have felt that too. But, you know, acknowledging our grief and losses, it's okay. I mean, yes, there are people who have lost work. Absolutely. And there are those who are infected with this coronavirus and, and, and fighting this thing. And, and there are those who care, are caring for them and who have lost their loved ones. But we're all facing grief and loss in our own ways right now. And my heart is troubled looking forward too. We, we've been looking at how we could possibly reopen church. I know a lot of businesses and, and places like that are thinking through those things now as well. But how in the heck can we safely lift restrictions without risk? And that's, that's a real hard thing that we're all wrestling with right now. I mean, there's risks in both ways, either way. Either we stay locked down and risk further suffering, or we open up and risk further suffering. It's really kind of a catch-22 right now. Mm -hmm. And... Gosh, I've been wrestling with that lately. Like, where, where is the hope in that? And, and I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of you have been thinking about this as well. And, and maybe you can help me with this too. How do you find hope when things seem hopeless? How do you find hope when things seem hopeless? Well, for me, um, when things seem hopeless, and I go back to... I go back to other times in life when I they weren't as hopeless as maybe we're mm. you know maybe we're feeling now. But there are times in my life I'm sure all of you can relate. There's been times in your life where you feel kind of down, you feel kind of hopeless. You're like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. um, so what I what I do is I'll look back and go, oh, you know I got through this, and I got to. So I look back at challenging times and say. I got through that, God will get me through this. Mm -hmm. So it's looking at history to help me um, remember that, that there is always hope. Yeah. Things always do um, get better. Maybe not the way we expect them to, um, but the way that they're meant to get better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. One, one of the ways that has helped me over the years is going back to one of my favorite Bible verses, and, it, and it's from Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, and you can look that up later if you'd like. But it talks about how suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And so I remember that in previous times of my life, going through some tough situations, and, and that's been giving me hope that we will get through this. And mm -hmm. let me remind you, we will get through this. And when Jesus was talking with his disciples in our gospel reading today, things were about to get bad then as well. The words in the book of John are part of a larger conversation that Jesus was sharing about what was soon to come for him, which in Jesus' case was facing the cross. Do not let your hearts be troubled, says Jesus, but he had to know that their hearts would certainly be troubled, right? So Jesus tried to help them out by saying a little bit later on, believe in God and also in me. Jesus knew that there were hard times that lie ahead for the disciples. And that's why he spends the next four chapters in the book of John after this reading, walking with them through how to stay strong in their faith in the hard times that lie ahead. Think about that. He takes four chapters to help his disciples walk through this. And he starts out with, do not let your hearts be troubled, and then moves to these words a few verses later in verse 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. And as they think ahead to what is coming and the ways that our elected leaders right now seem to be heading in different directions with how to move forward, gosh, it's confusing to think about. And, and there are ways being talked about that they don't sound like Jesus' way, the truth and the life. And so it got me to thinking, what is Jesus' way? And he showed us. And it's the way of the cross. It's the way of life over death. It's the way of love and caring for our neighbors. It's the way of life, the way of hope. The way of love. And so when I think of the way forward, the way of Christ is 
that way forward. When we started with social distancing, gosh, it feels like three years ago, but it was just in March, and we started locking things down, we did so out of love and care for our neighbors. We did so to ensure life and hope for as many as we could. And that is the way forward now. We need to move into this next phase of this pandemic, mindful of this, when it will be just as critical to love and care for our neighbors. And so I, I thought about that line for a second, when, when it's just as critical to love and care for our neighbors, and, and I thought about who in my life has modeled this for me, maybe not now during this time of pandemic, but at any point during your life. So who in your life has modeled love and care for your neighbors to you? Hmm. So take a second to think about that. How yeah, I, oh my goodness, I there are numerous, mm -hmm. <laughs> numerous people um, in my life, and, and not, I'm going to pick a not obvious one. I'm going to pick um, a woman from my internship congregation that I met 21 years ago mm -hmm. now, um, who just was really, um, she'd been through so much, and I'm not going to tell all her story, but just to say she'd been through a lot relationship-wise, health-wise, and yet she made it all about loving other people. Mm. She, um, she was just dedicated to loving others and letting that flow out of everything she did. And I mean, even though she was pretty, pretty sick with an illness, she faithfully taught Sunday school mm. every week, was there, um, the kids adored her, and she was at church and she just, she just, it just oozed out of her. Yeah. Yeah, this love of other mm -hmm. neighbors, yeah. Wow, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and as I think about that, um, all right, I'll pick an obvious one. I, th I think back to my grandmother who, mm. even, even in her later years, as she was going through a, a myriad of health problems, she still took the time to reach out and connect with friends and family and to pray out loud in bed every night. Yep. And, and, to, and to hear that um, when, I, when I would visit her was just, wow. Talk, talk about love and care for your neighbors through the, the work of, of prayer and, and just reaching out on the telephone and through notes. I mean, yeah, I, I miss that. So, yeah. yeah. And, and as I think about going forward and, and talking about this next phase, unfortunately, it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be uneasy, just like it was when we started this whole thing back in March. And unfortunately, there's no way around that uncomfortableness, that anxiety, that uneasiness. And we, and we hear businesses talk about how uneasy that is on the news, right? Well, it's going to be just that like that on the, at church as well, and probably especially at church. And, and we need to look at each and every aspect about how we share worship to best ensure that the most vulnerable person that could possibly come to church would be able to feel safe in that setting. And that's going to be hard work. And... I think loving and caring for our neighbors has to be that way. How do we protect the most vulnerable person in our midst? This is the way going forward for the disciples who were about to endure difficulties they couldn't even imagine at the time. Mm -hmm. The way of Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. The way of the cross, which in those times and in these times, now proves to us that death does not have the last word only life eternal with Jesus does. And so if we stay focused on the way of truth and life, if we begin to see that there are opportunities that await, we can learn how best to live into what's coming. Mm -hmm. And when I start to focus on the way of Christ, my heart, even in these times, starts to become less troubled and begins to be hopeful for how we can learn to be neighbors that care for all out of the love and care that Jesus has for us. And this is the way forward. It's the way of Christ. God be with you as we begin to face the next steps of these pandemic and to remember that the way, the truth, and the life is the way to go. Amen. Amen. 
So for our prayers of the church, um, it'll say, of course, and it'll be on the bottom of your screen, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, but also we'll take a moment for you to add up, you know, at home or whoever else you want to put on mm -hmm. for the um, for the prayers. And we do, um, in my church, we send out an email that has people for you to pray for, yep. needs that we've been arisen. So um, you can feel right. free to lift them up verbally at home. Mm -hmm. for those. And there'll be an opportunity in the prayers today as well to lift up any prayers that you have on your hearts and minds as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. let's pray. So, still worshiping from our homes, but with hearts bonded into one. Let us pray for all who are in need. Build us up, mothering God, that like living stones we embody the strength that only you can give. Nurse all the baptized with the milk of your word. As you provided the early church with the apostle Matthias, fill now the church's need for leaders to serve your holy people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Form us to be humble participants in your complex creation. We praise your power in evolving a magnificent earth from flowering trees to tropical rainstorms, from black holes to beloved pets. Lead us to respect your wondrous earth with both all that creates and all that destroys. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Assist the leaders of nations to find and follow your ways of justice. Guide their way through the challenges of pandemic and poverty. Protect governors and legislators from sickness and burnout. Despite our own considerable needs, keep us mindful of the needs of others, especially refugees and prisoners. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany those who are sick, sorrowful, or confused. Comfort them in suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We beg you to protect us from the coronavirus, and we pray for those we name now in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain those who mother infants and children. Uphold the parents and grandparents who now must school their children. Provide enough food and resources for families. Grant safe pregnancy and delivery to expectant parents. And minister to those who endure infertility and miscarriage. Bless the countless relatives, medical workers, and hospice volunteers who give to others mothering care. Embrace all for whom today's cultural celebration of mothers is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Always loving God, we are bold to add our own prayers whether we speak them out loud in our homes or silently in our hearts, as you know what we need before we even speak the words. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember before you all who have died in the faith, those like Stephen martyred for the faith, those struck down by the coronavirus, and those we now name in our hearts. At the end, bring us all to you, who are our way, our truth, and our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place for all for whom we pray in your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for worship today. We're glad that you're able to see us, whether it's on Sunday morning or whenever you get the opportunity to see this. That's the beauty of putting things on YouTube. You can see this wherever and whenever you want. <laughs> and please share this with those that you think this would make a difference for in their lives. We'd love to see this message spread around. So if you'd like to share this with others, feel free to do so. Um, check with your church about other things that are happening throughout the next coming weeks. Um, summer activities are coming up, so you definitely want to check in and see where the, the status is of those. And also check in to see that there's online opportunities that you can get together with people, whether it's for Bible study or prayer or, or just a time just to check in. Um, please check with your church about those opportunities right. and how to get connected with those. And 
again, thank you for those that continue to send your offerings into church to make yes. sure that the church is still there for people even during this time of pandemic. Um, our buildings might still be there, um, and we may not be able to get to our buildings, but the church is not just a building, it's all of you. And so your offerings are helped to continue to support the ministry that happens in our community. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, no, I've been I've been humbled by your generosity and continued mm -hmm. generosity. Yeah, exactly. And both of us have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. so I can't think of any other announcements though. Um, mm -hmm. You did see a cat earlier, but um, the one time, see, we called Norm out on his uh, always having to show up when we're videoing, and mm -hmm. now he won't because that's how cats are. <laughs> That's okay. So the you, minute you think you have them figured out, mm -hmm. then they do something different. Oh, yeah. yeah so he's taking a break this he's week. Taking, but don't worry. Yeah. He'll be around again, I'm sure. He wants to renegotiate his contract. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> all right. On that note, we better end the service. So <laughs> we'll, I'll we'll take a moment for a blessing. Yes, we will bless it. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now you'll get to listen to our, our sending hymn, which is one that I believe most of you will know and will hopefully bring back some wonderful memories, the song, Jesus Loves Me, um, which is we as, usually associate it as a children's song. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are actually more than one verse. So um, we do hope and you sing along at home with Jesus Loved Me. Again, thanks to Kate Snyder for coming out and recording this. Um, it's her, her week to play. So enjoy. Great. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings.